for uh, Cuyahoga County Public Works Procurement and Contracting Committee meeting for Wednesday, August 1st, 2018. Roll, uh, roll call, please. Calling the roll, Mr. Tuma. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Ms. Conwell. Ms. Conwell is absent. Mr. Schron. Here. Ms. Baker. Here. There is a quorum. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And um, is there any public comment? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. No one is signed in. Okay. No public comment. Um, if we could uh, have approval of the minutes from the July 18th, 2018 meeting. We have a motion and a second for approval of minutes from the July 18, 2018 meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. And Madam Clerk, if you could ref uh, the first matter referred to committee, please. Resolution number 2018-0157, fixing the 2019 water storm and sanitary sewer maintenance and or sewage treatment rates for county sewer districts in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code. Okay, um, and if you could please just state your name for the record. Sure, uh, Mike Chambers with Public Works. Okay, Ms. Chambers, and uh, what exactly is the, the purpose of this resolution here? This resolution and this item and the act, the next item, uh, okay. 158, are, are annual uh, issues that we, not issues, annual resolutions that we bring before you as required by Ohio, Ohio Revised Code. Basically what we're doing is um, we're fixing the rates with the first item with the, in 157, and then we're approving. Ohio Revised Code re requires us to do that. The main difference between this and last year, there was some changes within our communities. Um, and I'll, I'll point them out to you quickly. Uh, once again, we meet on a regular basis with our communities. We look at their balances. We look at their needs. Uh, we're a partner with them. Uh, Mayfield Heights has requested that we take the 250 that we're currently charging and reallocate it $1.50 to sanitary and $1 to storm. Uh, Brexville, Brexville has asked for a rate increase from $0.60 cents in their storm fund to $2.10. Walton Hills uh, has requested that we charge residentials $150 uh, a flat rate. This was not done previously because they, were, uh, they had other means to pay for that. And then finally, East Cleveland uh, has asked us to increase their rate from $2.50 to $3.00. So everything that I'm bringing before you and all these rates that were approved today have been, you know, approved by the mayors and the council members of these appropriate cities. Okay, so that they're the cities requesting the increases in reallocation of the funding, essentially. Correct. Okay. Um, any questions from my colleagues? They're actually asking for rate increases. Huh? They are. Yeah. They are. <laughs> well, they have needs, as you know. I mean, there's yeah, tremendous sure. needs out there. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Um, and what's the difference between, uh, well, I suppose we'll take the next resolution, but, um, well, we'll, we'll stick with this one here first. Yeah. Um, and this is required by Ohio Revised Code to do every year, up, update this. Christ, it, it, correct. It, it, it requires us to fix them, which is what we're doing now. Okay. And then okay. the next one will be to confirm and approve. Okay. All right. Um, and what uh, type of time frame are we talking on? Once again, re the revised code requires that we have this done by the first Monday in September, so we are asking for second reading suspension. Let me take that back. The, the, I think it's the 11th of uh, September. I'll get you that date. But uh, if we don't go second reading suspension, we'll, we'll miss the deadline. Is it the 10th? I'm sorry, the 10th. Okay. okay. And when do, you start, uh, when do you start dealing with the communities as far as what their needs are? Um, for these various rates? This is an ongoing basis, and I'll be honest with you, it was up until uh, last week that we got East Cleveland's uh, approval. So this, this continues on. We start in January. Actually, we, we meet year-round. Um, we're meeting in Mayfield Heights uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact. But it's an ongoing discussion. And generally speaking, uh, to go through the increase process takes time, council, yeah. and, and meetings. So uh, we just got East Cleveland was our last one, okay. which is why we're doing this. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion for second reading suspension. Second. And we have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Ayes have it. And we'll have that on second reading suspension. Okay. And then, uh, Madam Clerk, the next resolution, I know it's a companion piece, but we still have to read that into the record. Resolution number 2018-0158, approving and confirming the 2019 water storm and sanitary sewer maintenance and or sewage treatment assessments in accordance with Ohio Revised Code. Okay, Once Mr. Again, Chambers. Yeah, Mike Chambers again. As Ohio Revised call, calls for, this is now approving and confirming the rates we just fixed. Okay. All right, so this is just approving and confirming what we just fixed. Correct. Okay. Um, any questions or comments on the affirmation of this? Yeah, Mr. Miller? Second, second reading suspension also. Correct. Uh, Mr. Miller has a quick question. Okay. 
My question is, why do we have to have two resolutions? That's a great one, question. One to, uh, to fix it and one to approve and confirm. It's, it's, it's per Ohio Revised Code. Believe me, I wish we could combine them. I, we've, we've been doing this for many years now, and it, it, every year that question does seem to come up, but it's required by the code to fix them and then... It's yeah. not the only u unusual thing that's in the Ohio Revised Code. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, correct. You know, you know how the state ha state house people right. are. And, you know, so. <laughs> Should have fixed that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put it on the throw it on the list. <laughs> that's the <laughs> Okay, uh, and then Mr. Schron asked. Uh, I'm assuming this is also second reading suspension. It's a companion piece here. That is correct. Okay. Um, okay. We are, and I'll, I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second uh, for secondary suspension. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Ayes have it. And then, uh, Madam Clerk, if you could read the next resolution. Resolution number 2018-0159, making an award on requisition number 42014 to Schindler Elevator Corporation in the amount not to exceed $1,900,000 for elevator maintenance and repair services for various counting facilities for the period 9-1-2018 through 831 through 2021. Okay, and if we could have your name for the record. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Matt Reimer with the Department of Public Works. Okay, Mr. Reimer. Um, and what is this uh, purpose of this resolution here? Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, we're requesting consideration of a resolution that will result in a contract award to Schindler Elevator uh, for elevator maintenance and repair services uh, for various county facilities uh, for a three-year period beginning September 1st of this year running through October, uh, excuse me, August 31st of 2021. Uh, this uh, proposal was sought competitively through a request for proposal issued in March of this year. We had four uh, qualifying uh, proposals received. Uh, the Schindler Elevator proposal was the lowest uh, of, the three, of the four proposals and also scored as the best for non-pricing factors. Okay. Happy so, to answer any of your questions. Mr. Okay, Chairman. so it's the low, lowest and best bidder there? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, and then what, what I, you said maintenance and repair services. What, what does this entail in general? Uh, what are we looking at? So, yes, uh, there are both maintenance and repair needs as well as code compliance needs for elevator systems, as you can imagine. Uh, those are governed by the uh, City of Cleveland Building and Housing Department, uh, where we have our facilities within uh, the City of Cleveland. Uh, this represents 15 elevators and escalators in 15 buildings, 100 elevators, 12 escalators, and one material lift. Okay. So it's year-round uh, regular inspection, preventative maintenance, uh, repair maintenance as may be needed, and uh, any other uh, services that come up uh, with any failures of elevators uh, during the period of performance. Okay. Uh, Mr. Schron has a question. Yeah. Are elevator service contracts generally awarded to the manufacturer of that uh, system, or are there opportunities for Otis, to, for example, to take over Schindler or vice versa? Yes, so as you pointed out, uh, Councilman, there are a variety of different uh, manufacturers in our county inventory of, of elevators, right. uh, and we ask uh, uh, for the proposers to uh, submit their qualifications on working and servicing these other various manufacturers, and all, all of them typically have that capability. Uh, so the answer to your question is yes, they have the ability to. Okay, uh, so we're not stuck with one brand just because we installed that brand initially? That's correct, Councilman. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Uh, Ms. Baker? Um, yes, thank you. How do you determine the 1.9 million? Do they actually inspect all of these escalators and elevators, and are there any of them in need of replacement? How is it determined that this 1.9 up to or not to exceed number? Sure. So uh, past uh, history and with the maintenance and repair of these systems, the past market history, so we're able to make an informed estimate on what a not to exceed value should be on the contract, and with that, then the, uh, uh, the service providers are then proposing on how they allocate that service. Um, as an example, the Schindler uh, proposal was for 1,892,104,000, and they were the only provider that was within that 1.9 million not to exceed, which was included into the request for proposal requirements. Okay. Yep. So uh, the elevators is the lion's share of this repair and maintenance? It is. It is. It is. And Our escalators are limited to the Justice Center complex, the 12 escalators. I mentioned. Just a final. Is there any, um, at this point in time with some of our aging buildings, any of these uh, need replacement? Are you anticipating anything that uh, we may be repairing that may not be the wisest? 
to do right now? Oh, we are. So this is for the regular maintenance for the ones that are operational that we have to keep operational. But okay. yes is the answer to your question, Councilwoman. We have, from a 2014 assessment, a number of capital improvements planned. They're reflected in the Council-approved capital improvement plan. The upcoming uh, buildings off the top of my head are uh, the Virgil Brown uh, building, uh, also uh, the Jane and Hunter building. Um, we're also uh, in design on a, uh, uh, an upgrade modernization of uh, the freight elevator at the Courthouse Square building. So there are a variety of those, and, and those changes that would then be reflected in this service contract, not performed by this uh, contract, but uh, the services would then be amended to, uh, Good. Uh, to change the level of service based on what manufacturer or you know, the age of the system once we get it in place. Good to know. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, and I, I see the uh, this covers September first, two thousand eighteen, the start date. So again, I mean, we're we looking for second reading suspension here, Mr. Chairman. If we could, that'd be requested. Uh, uh, the current contract runs through August thirty first of this year. So yes, that would be appreciated if we could consider second okay. reading suspension. Um, I'll make a motion for second reading suspension. Second. And we have a second um, for second uh, for second reading suspension. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and we'll do second reading suspension on uh, 2018-0159. Um, if we could, Madam Clerk, the Thank last uh, resolution here. Resolution number 2018-0160, making an award on requisition number 42799 to Sherman Construction in the amount not to exceed $1,239,932.45 for replacement of Stone Road Bridge number 00 0.98 over Hemlock Creek in the City of Independence. Okay, and if you could please state your name for the record. Nicole English with Public Works. We're um, asking to make an award recommendation to Shermer Construction on Stone Road Bridge replacement. This is being awarded based on the Cuyahoga County Based Business Preference Program. The um, low bid was actually J.D. Williamson, who is out of Talmadge, and Shermer was within a half a percent difference, so they had the ability to match the low bid, so they're being awarded. Um, the difference was $7,263. Um, they're meeting their, um, they have an approved diversity plan, and there was three bids, and they were the second lowest, um, and we're asking for an award. Okay, and um, again, just a little detail as far as what the project in includes here. I see it's bridge replacement. So. Right. So this bridge, um, actually the City of Independence is working separately on a Hemlock Trail project okay. that you might be aware of that they had. Uh, repurposed earmark money for so we're coming along and our bridge was already deteriorated we had it scheduled on um, to be replaced and we were able to partner up with them the trail projects uh, being constructed right now we are accommodating their trail to come through the bridge and then we're um, essentially replacing the the tra traffic piece of the bridge um, and it's due to condition that we're doing this okay um, any questions mr. Schron? Uh, the uh, awarding of this to the second lowest bidder, uh, is that a reflection of the policy on supporting county-based businesses? Is Correct. That, and, and the business that actually went to all the trouble to put together a bid and came in with the lowest bid, uh, have they been successful as receiving bids in the past? Yes. Yeah, so we um, Currently, I think we have one job with J.D. Williamson, but they have done projects for us in the past. The company out of Talmadge. That yeah. was the lowest, and then also the bid that we're making the award to. They've done work with us too. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm, this policy is one I voted against because I'm not a big fan of uh, of, of doing that uh, uh, because the, ultimately, had that bid not come in, uh, we would have been paying a higher number uh, through the original bidder uh, when they came in second, um, and. So what it uh, does, I think, or has the potential to do, is that uh, if they don't, if the lower bidder does not get bids from this county on a regular basis, eventually they're going to walk away, I think. We do and, see. And as long as you use them, and I'm not trying to yeah. say artificially use them, uh, it is the policy. It's what this council passed. Uh, didn't disagree with it, but uh, I, I think it has the risk potentially of, of Losing qualified bidders are going to say, "Ah, they're going to be a, they're going to give it to the homer, uh, and, uh, uh, and and they get a chance to reopen their bid." And so, I just want to be be conscious of of the folks who who are successfully lowest bidder, but not successfully in getting the award. Mm -hmm. And if it's 
if you say that they, they do get wards too, then fine. Then they, they, they probably aren't going to walk away from the table. Yeah, the other thing is um, on federal aid jobs, ODOT does not let us put that, uh, the Cuyahoga County based business program in the bid. So, you know, we see them bid on federal jobs too. Um, and again, within 2%, this bid is fairly low. So for them to be so close was kind of surprising. Yeah, I'm very um, surprised it came up there. Right. Okay. Okay, it's noted for the record, Mr. Shaw. <laughs> um, Mr. Uh, Miller? What are the MBE, FBE, or, or SBE uh, elements on this contract? 7% uh, SBE, 6% WBE, and 17% MB, MBE. And they're meeting them. The, okay. Okay. And uh, do you know uh, how many times we've used the small business preference? It, it seems to me it's not been very many. I think it's only the second time in public works, but Lenora might be able to speak to any other departments. Good afternoon. Lenora Lockett, Office of Procurement and Diversity. Um, I would have to say from recall that it's less than five times. Mm -hmm. I, w I can confirm with an email on my last report mm -hmm. of what the actual number is, but it's very infrequent. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further questions? Okay, um, what is the time frame on this uh, project So just in, in light of only one meeting in August, we'd prefer second reading suspension so they could start construction, you know, as soon as they can. Oh, you know, that's, you just led me to the next question. So when does construction start? Uh, they would is depending on when we get the award they'll schedule a notice to proceed probably within a week after the contract signed Okay, and do you do you know uh, a time frame the length of time this project? Could it's possibly anticipated be? to be completed November 1st of 2019 2019 okay Okay, um, with that I'll, I'll make a motion for second reading suspension Second, second. okay, and we have a, mo a second a motion and a second for second reading suspension all those in favor say aye aye opposed nay ayes have it uh, Madam Clerk, is any, I'm sorry, uh, members of council, is any other miscellaneous business for the committee? Nope. Okay, seeing none, um, we will adjourn at um, 1027 a.m. <laughs>